Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> hey, listen, I just want to do a, a surprise, um, a surprise live real quick. And um encourage you to come on in if, if you see it coming up on a on a Sunday, a Sunday night, Sunday night live. And yeah, maybe that's another broadcast. I'm gonna call it Sunday Night Live. <laughs> hey everybody, come on in. Hey Shakira, Karen, what's going on? Mother Sandra, good to see you. Son Antonio, blessings, good to see you all. Elder Rufus, good to see you. Come on in, folks. It's a Sunday, Sunday night live. I just want 15 minutes of your time. Hey, daughter D, good to see you. Shayla, blessings to you, Living Way. As you're coming in, just share and invite folk to come on. I just want to talk about the anointing. Um, for for a minute, if you don't mind. I was just taping um, one of our Practical Truth online study group sessions, session 22, as a matter of fact, and um, it's about the anointing, and I'm not going to give you that whole hour teaching, but I do want to talk about the anointing a little bit, and I believe it'll encourage your life. Hey, Javier, blessings to you. Friend Cynthia, glory to God. Good to see you this this night and uh, good to see you, Miss Irby. Good to see you, Bad. Good, good. I'm just calling out names as they're coming up. So good to see everybody. Who wouldn't mind sharing this? I want to talk about the anointing a little bit. Stephanie, hey, Brother Jermaine, blessings, man. Glory to God. Come on in, everybody. I want to talk about the anointing. I believe it's going to be helpful, helpful, helpful today. So come on in, folks. Praise the Lord. Sister Melody, good to see you all. Come on in, folks. I want to talk about the anointing. Hope you had a great, great Sunday, great Sunday afternoon, great Sunday evening. You got out of the Sunday afternoon kind of comatose situation. <laughs> and um just thought I'd share this, this, this with you today, tonight. Um, hope you can see me okay and the camera angle is all right. I just... Uh, made some adjustments here with my daughter's help, so I want to make sure it's coming off okay. Uh, the anointing, the anointing in in the within the body of Christ, within the realm of church, we talk about the anointing um, rather casually. Actually, I think, my opinion, very casually. We say so-and-so was anointed, this person was anointed, that person was anointed, or that song was anointed, you know what I mean? That play was anointed, that preaching was anointed, you know, that that sweet potato pie was anointed, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I can't argue with that sometimes. Sometimes, you know, Elder Sandra's pies, pies carry a little, a, a certain level of anointing. Um, we say certain church services were anointed. So we use a word rather carefully. Uh, I should say casually, not carefully. But as we look in the scripture, the, the anointing of God um, was and is very special. And I think in these next few moments, um, if, if, if the Holy Spirit will anoint me for this moment, I believe that when you click off from this live, you're going to recognize an anointing on your life and recognize a power on your life and an ability on your life to deal with whatever you're dealing with and to go through whatever you're going through and to come out in the land of victory on top of it. Now, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, as well is in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible speaks of Jesus of Nazareth being anointed. That's what the Bible. The Bible says Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all them who were oppressed of the devil. And so, so it speaks of Jesus being anointed. Luke chapter 4 speaks of Jesus being anointed. Now, the anointing is so important. We'll define it here in a minute or try to define it in a minute. But the anointing was so important that until Jesus was anointed, 
He did not do the supernatural works that we know him to have done famously and yet still does. It, it, without, without the anointing, Jesus could not, nor did he do, the many mighty miracles. This, despite the fact that he was born king, the Bible says he was born king. Despite the fact that by the age of 12, he, 12, he was confounding the religious scholars and rulers of his day. Despite the fact that he was submitted to his parents. Despite the fact that he lived a sinless life. Despite the fact all of those things Jesus was doing, but yet not one supernatural miracle occurred until he was anointed. So let's define that just for a moment in a very strict way, if you don't mind. The anointing, to be anointed means to be smeared upon. I got my little lotion here. Lotion. Everybody needs lotion from time to time, right? So, so, so what's happening right now, folks, is that I am a representative. Blessings to you, sir. Um, I am smearing on lotion. One could say that I am anointing myself with lotion. Why? Because I'm smearing it on. So when you see the word anointing, uh, um, the word anointed or anointing in Scripture, the root base of that is the smearing on of something. So here we go. So Jesus was, was anointed. He was smeared upon with something, the Holy Spirit. And with that came power, came ability, came strength, came grace. All of that came because what? Jesus was anointed. There's an anointing. Are you hearing me? Now we're talking about Jesus. We're going to talk about us here in a second, but, but, but that is incontro incontrovertible. We've got to recognize that there was an anointing. I believe, for instance, I believe every parent is anointed for their children. There's something that's been smeared on a parent that if, they're, if, they're, if, they, if they tap into their right mind, they have an anointing for their parents, for their family, for their children. Are you hearing me? Right? And so there's a divine enablement that comes with the anointing. Now, our problem is because we talk about it so casually and talk about it with great indifference and we joke about it, we say this is anointed, that's anointed, that church service is anointed. Girl, didn't she sing that song? Man, he preached that thing. She preached that thing. Man, I tell you what, that play was anointed. I mean, we use that term so loosely, we actually dilute its revelation and its power because it is actually reserved for sacred things. And how you and I, right this very second, if we are followers of Jesus, if we've been filled with the Holy Ghost, every one of us has an unction or an anointing from God already. Did you hear that? First Timothy, First John 2.27, I believe it is. Every one of us has already from the jump street and a divine enablement. So let's go a little bit further. So the anointing is a smearing on. So when we take Luke chapter 4, verse 16, 17, 18, and 19, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, when we take those things and understand what happened to Jesus, this is what we've got to conclude. That the anointing, the smearing on of the Holy Spirit, gave Jesus supernatural abilities. So the anointing on your life, on my life, enables us to do what we could not otherwise do. Did you hear me? Right? The anointing of God enables us to do what we could not otherwise do. We couldn't do it in our strength. We could not do it in our own ability. We couldn't last and we couldn't be sustained. We couldn't go through what we're going through without the divine enablement of God. And so the, the anointing is not, is not a charismatic badge whereby we say, hey, I'm anointed. Look at me. It, no, it's a divine enablement. It's a clothing of. It's a, it's, a, it's a manifestation of. It's the presence of the Spirit of God upon a person that enables them to do what otherwise they could not do. 
Now, if we look carefully at Luke chapter 4, and I told myself I was just going to do this for 15 minutes, but I feel I feel anointed right now, right? Right? The, 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 when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for God has anointed me. You know that scripture, right? Jesus was not bragging. He was stating a statement of fact. He was saying, just, you all need to understand that I have been chosen and I have been enabled to do X, Y, and Z. I've been anointed. I've been enabled to to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are bound, to, to, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to set those that are oppressed. I have been enabled to do that. And that holds true for you and I today as well. Everybody that's watching, if you're a follower of Jesus, you ought to raise both hands right now and say, I am anointed. You ought to say that about yourself. I am anointed, right? It's kind of an odd thing to be talking about on a Sunday night, right? But we've got, to, we've got to recognize that, that what you're facing in your days, your tomorrows, your weeks, and the success that is yours is not based upon natural ability or natural talent. Quite honestly, many things for which most people are facing today cannot be solved by human natural means. It just can't be. There's not enough time, money, counselors, therapists, drugs. There's not enough uh, money. You don't have enough friends. You don't have enough connections. You don't have enough spiritual depth, nor do I, to solve some of the problems that we're facing right now. But there is an anointing from the Holy One that can enable a person such as yourself, such as me, to be able to go through what we're going through and to get through what we're going through and to have victory on the other side of it. But you've got to recognize that you have been smeared upon by the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. As a matter of fact, there are certain things that are standing in your way right now. I feel like I need to prophesy for a moment, right? There are certain things standing in the way of you right now that are just bona fide evil. And you you don't have the requisite strength or even grace upon your thinking to address that thing and deal with that thing. But there's an anointing on you that you didn't get from Walmart, but there's an anointing that came upon you that came from the very presence of God himself that will enable you to get through what you're going through and to overcome the thing that's overwhelming you right now. There is an anointing for that. Glory to God. There is an anointing for that. There's an anointing for that. And so what needs to happen in our conscious mind is we have to recognize that, that not only am I saved, not only am I an heir of God, not only am I a joint heir with Jesus according to the scriptures, but I'm also anointed. That There's a divine enablement that's been smeared upon me that causes me to do and to be what I otherwise could not do or become. That making some sense, you got to catch this thing by your spirit tonight, right? That I'm not just talking about what happens on a Sunday morning in church service either. Quite honestly, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says Jesus um, uh, of Nazareth, where he was brought up, went into the synagogue. I'm in the Bible right now. Went into the synagogue, which means Jesus went to his home church told those folk, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me, and he goes down the list. But where did Jesus demonstrate the smearing on of the Holy Spirit? He demonstrated it primarily in the corridors and the streets of his community. That's where he used it. Are you hearing me, right? So the anointing isn't just so we can get through a church service. The anointing is to, to destroy yokes and remove burdens wherever we go. There's not a devil that can withstand the anointing of God. There's not one. There's not one devil that can withstand the anointing of God. There's not, there's not one bondage that can withstand the anointing of God. There's not one sickness or illness that can withstand the anointing of God. There's not one depression that can withstand the anointing of God. Are you hearing me? There's not one sorrow that can withstand the anointing of God. Are you hearing me? There's not one need that can withstand the anointing of God. Because the anointing of God is a divine enablement that enables you to do what you could not do and become what you could not become on your own. 
It, there is an, a divine, there is an anointing of God. There's a divine enabling of God that causes and shuts the mouth of lions, that gives you favor in the courts of Pharaoh, that enables you to walk through uh, torrential downpours and overwhelming odds and causes you to win when otherwise you have lost already. There's an anointing. There's a divine enablement to do that. There's a grace for you to be able to pray through things that you otherwise could not pray through. There's a grace and an anointing that enables a person such as yourself to be able to get this thing done. And otherwise people say, I don't know how he did that. I don't know how she did that. It's the anointing of God that can enable a person to do that. But it's not a goosebump. It's not enthusiasm. It's not hype. It's not emotionalism. It's matter of fact, you're anointed whether you feel like you're anointed or not. Right? You're anointed whether you feel like you're anointed or not. Right? I don't walk around feeling I'm anointed. I walk around knowing I'm anointed. There is a difference. Again, I'm not bragging. Neither, of course, neither was Jesus bragging. Neither are you bragging. You're just, you're just stating a fact, a flat out fact. I'm anointed. Why, why can I, how can I say that? Because the Bible says I am. That's how I can say that. Glory to God. You got to start saying what God says about you rather than what your circumstances are speaking to you. Some, for some right now, your circumstances are speaking to you saying, you're done. You're never going to recover from this. Certain circumstances are speaking to you saying that you're finished. It's never going to work. That you'll never come back from that. You'll never get over that. You'll never come through that. You're hopelessly bound. You're hopelessly depressed. You're hopelessly broken. That's a devil talking to you. That's a circumstance talking to you. You got to talk back to that thing, but not with your own mind. You got to talk back to that thing in the name of Jesus. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can have what God says I can have. Come on. That's what, that's a, that's anointed anointing talking. That's anointing talking. And I told myself we're going to be on this thing for about 15 minutes and keep it moving, right? But I'm here to tell you right now, folks, I'm here to tell you right now, there's an anointing for whatever you're dealing with. There is an anointing for every circumstance and every situation that you are facing. There's an anointing for it. There is, there is, there absolutely is. To access that anointing, however, is first of all, you got to know that you are, number one. Number two, it takes a, it takes a degree of humility. Could you recognize God in my own strength and my own ability? I cannot get this done. The twist and the terms and the perversion is so deep. I cannot unravel this madness. It's going to take something beyond me. It takes that right? It, takes, it does take fasting. It does take praying, right? It takes those things to come to the end of oneself to recognize that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Come on now, amen. Everyone that is watching and listening, if you are a follower of Jesus today, you have been anointed by the Holy One. Glory to God. Yes, in your broken condition, in your situation, you've been anointed by the Holy One. Glory to God. Absolutely. 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 You've been anointed by the Holy One. Glory to God. But when you start to walk in that revelation of the fact that you have been smeared on by the Holy Spirit. I use this example of my little lotion here that I keep at my desk so that on the morning decrees I'm not ashy all the time, right? Um, that, that, that. That, that the anointing is a smearing on of the Holy Spirit, according to the scriptures. It's a smearing on. It's like taking massage oil and massaging it in. James chapter 5, verse 16. It's, it's, it's like, it's, 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 it's when you anoint someone with oil, that word implies not just a dab, but a, but a massaging in of that thing. And so when you have been smeared on by the Holy Ghost, guess what happens? You take on the characteristics of a supernatural being. Come on, stay with me now. I'm in the Bible. You got to read the Bible. Otherwise, you're going to think I'm tripping. I'm not tripping. The Bible says that I am a partaker of divine nature. There it is, right? So I'm not going to be a mere man. I'm a, I'm a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says Jesus of Nazareth. 
whom God anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, went about doing good and healing all them who are oppressed of the devil. Can we go a little bit further? You can be discouraged and still be anointed. Matter of fact, some of you are watching right now. You are discouraged. You're struggling in certain areas of your life, right? You don't know what time it is half the time you're going through. It's so deep for you right now. But guess what? The anointing of God did not change because you are in a low state of emotion right now. It did not change. The power of God did not diminish. The efficacy of the blood did not, did not decrease because of your, of your emotional state right now and the, your circumstances that you're facing with. You got to get that in your spirit. You can't live based upon your emotions. You can't make decisions based upon your emotions. You may make decisions with emotion, but not based upon emotions. Come on now. Come on now, right? You can't make decisions even based upon circumstances. You make decisions based upon the word of God and you speak to circumstances. You don't stand at the base of the mountain and beg and cry and cry about the mountain. You speak to the mountain, but only an anointed person will recognize who they are. An anointed person like a David facing Goliath knows who he is. Are you hearing me? Right? And so you got to get it in your spirit tonight. Your Monday may be full of challenges, so says your schedule. But guess what? It doesn't even matter. Why? Because you are anointed for whatever it is that Monday brings. Get it in your spirit. You are anointed for whatever Tuesday brings. Get it in your spirit. You are anointed whatever Wednesday and Thursday and Friday brings. You are anointed for it. Are you hearing me? You are anointed for it. You don't cry to mountains. You speak to mountains. Are you hearing me? You speak to mountains. Glory to God. Man, I feel this thing. Right? Right? It's good to feel certain things at times, but you can't go by what you feel, man. You got to go by faith, right? I'm anointed. Before Jesus did miracle one, he was anointed and recognized he was anointed, knew he was anointed, knew he was anointed. This is for somebody. I'm sure of it right now. I'm po absolutely positive of this. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible says, baptized by his second cousin, John, he was baptized and he came out of the water. The Bible says that the heavens opened and a voice out of heaven began to speak. So then we have the Father speaking. We got the Holy Spirit descending like a dove and we got Jesus. We got the Trinity all in one picture. Beautiful, I would argue, right? And the, and the heavens open, and Jesus says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. May I ask a question? What did Jesus do that would cause the father to be pleased with him? He hadn't performed any miracles, right? Jesus was just Jesus. This is for somebody tonight. There are some of you are still trying to perform for God like a circus animal. Hear me. I know that's strong, but stay with me. You're performing like you are in a circus and you're trying to carry the favor of God by, by being, by being, you know, a certain way. But I'm here to tell you right now that he loved you before you ever got good. And he loved you even in your worst state. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter five, verse eight, nine, and 10 tells us like this, that, that God demonstrated his love for us, that while yet we were sinners, Christ died for us. So he died for you. He gave his ultimate sacrifice for you before you did anything of any value. Can you get that? Get it in your spirit today. Before you did anything of any value, he already loved you and demonstrated how much he absolutely loves you. Stay with me. So Jesus comes out of the water, dripping, I'm assuming. The heavens open, a dis a, a, the Holy Spirit descends, that's when he was anointed, and a voice out of heaven says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. May I tell you what was happening there? There was a revelation of affirmation that came from the Father that was downloaded, if you will, into Jesus before he did miracle one. He was affirmed. That word comes from a French Latin word that means to, to make solid within. To affirm may, means to make solid within. May I, may I help you this morning? This morning, this evening, depending on when you're watching this. May I help you? One of the problems 
with, 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 with our version of Christianity is we feel that we have to perform for the Father. We're fractured on the inside of ourselves. So when someone gives you a compliment, that compliment just leaks out of you because you've been fractured. You've been molested by life. You haven't heard the words of the Father and says, you are my beloved. Yes, just the way you are. You haven't heard those words, right? You haven't heard those words. So you're trying to perform to hear those words. There are words that the Father will say to us, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But he didn't say that to Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son. Are you hearing me? Sons are loved because they exist. Servants are appreciated because of what they do. I'm here to tell you are a child of God, according to John chapter 1. You are a child of God, and as such, you are loved just because you exist. Can you get that in your spirit right now? I want you to get that in your spirit. You are loved with a dirty diaper. You are loved with 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 pablum all over your face. You are loved um, um, just the way you are. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. And Jesus was affirmed before he even began any area of ministry. Are you hearing me? Furthermore, he was anointed before there was any ministry done. Many of us are trying to do, trying to do ministry and haven't been anointed or don't know we're anointed. Many of us are trying to do stuff for which we are not even anointed. That's one of the reasons why burnout exists in the ministry today and folks are breaking down is because you're doing stuff that you're not anointed to do. There's no grace upon your life to do it. Are you hearing me? We're still talking about the anointing, but I, I feel that it was important for somebody who's watching that what you want to do, hear, hear, hear your brother tonight, what you really want to do is work on the affirmation aspect of you and your father's relationship who art in heaven. That's the most important thing for you right now is to be affirmed by the Father. Now, please hear this. The affirmation of the Father to be made solid within has nothing to do with you being good or bad. So please do not mistake the very fact that the Father loves you as co-signing poor behavior. Please don't. You, you'll, you'll miss it by a country mile if you do that. Are you hearing me? Right? He loves you just because. He can be displeased with your actions and your activity, but he loves you. Come on, get it in your spirit today. Get it in your spirit. Glory to God. I think you need to share this with somebody because there are people that need, need I really sense, need to hear this, hear this tonight. Glory to God, right? You got to get it in your spirit. You know, this is so true many times when people are going through a very hard time. I know I can raise both hands to that. When you're going through a very difficult time and it doesn't seem help is not coming, answers aren't coming, breakthroughs not coming, and you're really wondering, do you even care that I'm going through? Doesn't it sound like the disciples who were in the boat? They woke up Jesus and said, don't you care, Master, that we're perishing? <laughs> and do you know he, didn't even, he never answered them? He never sat there and said, you know, I just want you to know, I really do care that you're perishing. He didn't. He got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, and then rebuked them. Because essentially, they should know, I care about you. That should be a foregone conclusion. When we look at the cross of Christ, we should be able to look and say, surely he cares about me. So if you're in a situation right now, you're going through and it's tough sledding, it's real difficult right now, and you're wondering, God, don't you care what's going on? May I encourage you to look at the cross? May I encourage you to look at the cross? Because if you look at the cross, you won't ever say that again. You won't wonder if he cares about you. You'll know he cares about you. He cared enough to die for you. Are you hearing me? And I would even submit today that he cares enough about you that you're on this live right now. And that the Holy Spirit can speak to you. It's not even important what I say. It's important what the Holy Ghost is saying while you're watching, while you're listening. Are you, are you, are you getting this in your spirit just tonight? Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God, man. Glory to God. 
So the anointing is a divine enablement that's smeared upon a person. It's something that initially, at least, that you don't have to qualify for. You have to exist for in the body of Christ for. And that the anointing of God is greater than anything that is anti-anointing. You've heard the term, the phrase, and the scripture, the anti-Christ. That word actually means more literally anti-anointed one. So whatever, listen, whatever you're facing, the anointing of God is greater than the anti of God. Get it in your spirit. The anointing of God is greater than the anti of God. So whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, there's an anointing that enable you to get through what you're going through and to win with sweatless victory. There's an anointing of God. There's an enablement of God. And if you tap into that through communing with God, I promise you without hesitation, I promise you that you'll get through what you're going through with sweatless victory. I've got to be reminded of that every day. For me, and I, I don't, I'm not ashamed to tell you, for me, it takes several times a day of me, me reminding myself that I am anointed and God has given me grace and that I can get through what I'm going through. Every day, I've got to do that. There are times in the middle of the day, I promise you, I will go get on my knees somewhere. It, I don't know if there's any magic about the knees, but for me, getting on my knees in those moments are important. And I don't have a whole lot to say in those moments. I just... I just get on my knees and, and just just get in a posture of, of, of acknowledging, God, it's going to be by your grace. It's going to be by your enablement. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you right now, man, I feel God's help for somebody right now. I'm telling you, I feel God's help for somebody who's watching right now. Glory to God. One of the reasons why you keep struggling in particular, besetting sins. Some of the things that keep your reason because you're still trying to defeat those things in and of yourself by your own strength and grace. Do you know you're no match for those things? Every single solitary one of us has something with our name on it. That if we blink long enough and get the wrong situations and wrong conspiracy of events, any one of us could be bound up again, struggling like you've never struggled before, but stay with me. But once you begin to realize that he who the Son has set free is free indeed, and that it's the grace of God, the enablement of God, the, the anointing of God, there's not a chain that can bind the anointed person. Did you hear me? There is not one chain that can bind the anointed person. Not one chain that can bind the anointed person. Not one chain. The enemy can try. He can throw all kinds of trip wires and and, and, and try to bind you up with stuff. and But there's an anointing to break every yoke and every bondage. I need you to say this with me. I am anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Come on, say it with me. I am anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. I go about doing good and healing all them oppressed of the devil. You might as well say it. You might as well say, I am anointed with the Holy Ghost. Say it. I have been anointed with the Holy Ghost. And that anointing is not goosebumps, folks. It's not pimples. So you hearing me right now? It's not adrenaline running through your body. The anointing is a divine enablement of God to do what you could not do and to become what you could not become apart from it. I am anointed with the Holy Ghost. I used to say this. This is going to surprise some people. I used to say that when studying certain things that were way past my, my education and my confidence level. I would say that. I would say that my memory is blessed. In other words, my memory is anointed. That I have a divine ability to understand complex matters. Right? I would say that. That I have wisdom. That I have the wisdom of the ancient of days. That my wisdom precedes and, 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 and far surpasses anything I've ever read. Anything I've ever studied. Right? Why am I saying that? Because I don't have the natural ability to accomplish certain things that have got to get done, and neither do you. You are facing certain things that there is not a therapist, there is not a doctor, there is not a lawyer, there is not a financier, there's not even enough time left on the planet to unravel some stuff that you're dealing with. You need the anointing of the Holy Ghost in order for that to happen. I'm just telling you. 
I'm just flat out telling you, you need the anointing. I'm not talking about church anointings. I'm not talking about Pentecostal anointing. Stay with me. I'm not talking about just charismatic anointings. I'm not just talking about just, you know, just going through a high service time and a, and a good church. I'm talking about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Where, where the Father is dealing with you and the Son is dealing with you. And the, and, the, and the power of God comes and breaks yokes off your life and, and sets your mind free from stuff that's held you bound for 20 and 30 years. And all of a sudden, the lights go on and the, the, the locks fall off. Why? Because of the anointing of God. And every single solitary one of us who's watching right now, who's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, is a candidate for such an anointing. I'm not talking about merchandising anointing, a book written by Mr. Michael Brown. When I talk about merchandising anointing and pimping the anointing, we're talking about the divine enablement of God that sets you free and causes you to do what you could not do and become what you could not become. That's the anointing of God. The anointing of God can cause you to become what you could not become and do what you could not do. Are you hearing me? Glory to God, I feel God's help and strength today. Can I say that again? I think that's for somebody. The anointing of God will enable you to do what you could not do and become what you could not become. The anointing of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The anointing of... Listen, I see it, man. I see it. 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 The anointing of God will break the dams. Stay with me now. The anointing of God will break the dams. What are we talking about? I saw it just so clearly right now. There's somebody, somebody who's watching. And you know by now, you should be further along. There should be breaking. Uh, there should be some more real flow in your life financially. There should be a release in your body. And, 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 and you're wondering, what's the holdup? You're doing all the things you need to do. But a dam has been created upstream like a beaver's dam. I'm telling you, why would I think about this? I'm just telling you, it's the anointing of God. The, uh, the dam has been created upstream that's stopping the flow. So there's little trickles. There's, you know, no breakthrough. No breakthrough, no breakthrough. But I am telling you now, tonight, especially tonight, there is a there has been a release because of the anointing a release that's going to blow up that dam, that's going to cause a flow to come, that's going to cause even even a, even a that which has been backed up, it's going to come even with interest. Are you hearing me? Even with interest, it's going to come. It's going to come with a vengeance on your side, though. I am telling you right now, the dams are going to break. Somebody needs to get that in your spirit right now. You need to throw both hands up and say, I am anointed. That's what you need to do. I'm just telling you flat out. I would throw both hands up right now and say, I am anointed. And that anointing is going to cause that thing to break in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I am telling you further. Now, you need to write me. I got a few emails as of late, too, with these testimonies. Somebody needs to write me because it's going to happen to you. I am telling you. You're going to get a release now. But there's certain things that have happened three, four, five years ago that have been held up, even perhaps even in the courts, I'm not sure, but I think it may have been in the courts, and it's been held up in your life. And I am telling you by the Spirit of God, the dam is going to break. It's going to be a sign to you because that thing is going to be released to you, and you're going to say, I, did the, I forgot about it. It's been so long. It's going to be like finding new money. I am telling you, there's going to be a release that's going to come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I am telling you that there have been doctors. I, listen, you listen. You'll write me, I, I pray you'll write me and, and, and encourage my heart with this, but I am telling you that there are things for which a doctor said no, lawyers have said no, people have said no, and that you have forgotten about it, you have resigned yourself to live without it and deal without it, and there's going to be a release that's going to come your way. I am here to tell you that, man, I feel, I feel, the, I feel the, the help of God right now. I feel the help of God. There's somebody who's watching and you did not have the benefit. God help me now. You did not have the benefit of, 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 of a natural father um, to really handle and help certain things in your life. Hear the word of the Lord. This is coming to somebody. And you're an adult now. And it hasn't come. 
And there's certain things that should have come to you. There should have been, there should have been child support. There should have been other things that didn't come to you. And I am telling you right now by the Spirit of God that God is going to give you a no-so blessing. He's going to enable you to know that He has always been your Father who is art in heaven, who is in heaven. And he's going to divinely enable you and empower you. And you're going to find help come your way. And you're going, to, you're going to even drop to your knees in tears over what God's about to do. You need to hear the word of the Lord. I'm just telling you. I'm just flat out telling you. You know when I say that, I don't, I don't mean to, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm telling you. I see it like it's yesterday's newspapers. It's, I'm, it's not even like I'm prophesying to you. It's like I'm just telling you what's already happened. I am telling you by the Spirit of God that the dams are about to break. For, for, for some people, you've been waiting a while, and that dam is going to break. You've done everything you need to do. You've been in the right place, and God is going to send. Now, hear the word of the Lord. I keep saying this thing, man. I am telling you that God is going to speak to some people of unlikely character and of likely sources are going to come to be your financial deliverer. They're going to be the ones that are going to come. I can't explain how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen to you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can I, can, I, can I go a little bit further with that? The reason why I said thank you, Holy Ghost, on that is because I'm prophesying way beyond my mind right now. I promise you that. And I needed help um, um, of confirmation. And the moment I said that, this is what came to mind. I was in a car accident a number of years ago, um, 1989, um, in the month of this November, I believe, and my car imploded. I took a bath in 109 degrees antifreezing water on both legs. Should have died, could have died, but yet God said no. There was a number of times when God sent, sent death away. I rolled out onto the highway around on, on Route 95 in Rhode Island on exit 14 because the car imploded. I was burning with this hot water and, and I, I rolled onto the highway thinking I was going to get run over by a car because I had to get out of the car. But stay with me. Car destroyed, right? Burned for five days in the burn unit, right? They said I was going to lose 18% mobility in my, in my left ankle. But I had enough Holy Ghost from the word I had been studying to keep saying what God said rather than what the doctor said. I dealt, I looked at the facts. He said this, I say, but I shall not lose one percentage mobility. But that's not the testimony I wanted to share with you. The testimony is, here I am without my first finance vehicle, right? Not, um, not enough to get another car. Um, I can't go to work. And the governor I was working for, that, that state governor at the time, he was end up going to jail, and furthermore, I was out of a job. But hear this, and newly married. But hear this, I'm on the phone trying to get a car, and and somebody calls me from um, Boston. They were working for I think Shamit Bank. I'm not even sure Shamit Bank is still in existence. I'm in Rhode Island. God calls me from Boston, and says he says. Hey, Jeff, I hear that you're looking for a car. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm looking for a car. He said, what car do you want? I told him what car I want. He says, go back to that dealership and pick out that car. And I'm saying to myself, man, the guy told me no. Matter of fact, the guy told me, he says, I don't care who calls. You're not going to get this car. It wasn't even a very high-end car, but it was a brand new car, right? But hear, hear, hear this. How God would speak to somebody else that I haven't spoken to and didn't have a relationship with to go ahead and call a dealership for me and to sign for this because he worked for the bank and had that power and authority and says, whatever car this man wants, give him. That's not the first time. That's not the only time that's happened to me. But I'm here to tell you, I just needed that confirmation in my spirit because there's somebody's watching right now and the anointing of God is going to break the dam and, and cause individuals to come to your aid from sources presently unknown to you. You're going to find favor in odd situations. I'm telling you. I'm just flat out telling you. 
I don't know why. This is supposed to be 15 minutes, man, and we're, we're already 40 minutes into this thing or something like that. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. I don't mean to yell and shout and scream, but I'm just, I'm just flat out telling you. Glory to God. So look inward, friends, as opposed to getting your cues from your circumstances. Look inward. Look inward. There's an anointing from the unction. There's an unction from the Holy One. There's an anointing that abides within you. You were highly favored before you did any good thing at all. Are you hearing me? He loved you just because you existed. He, he had you because he wanted you. He knows everything about you. And he said, you're my beloved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Get it in your spirit tonight. Are you hearing me? Get it in your spirit. Especially you. This is this is this is this is for somebody for real. I saw this earlier today. I had no idea that I was gonna be on going live, but I saw this earlier today in my spirit around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm telling you, listen, especially you that have seed in the ground, stop crying over it. Stop, stop crying over what's dead and what's dying and what's not right. Stop crying over it because I am telling you that your seed is going to produce a harvest for you. It's a law. It has got to come to pass. Are you hearing me? You have seed in the ground. Go back to the seed. Go back to the place of your sowing in your spirit. Go back to that and realize, wait a minute, I've got seed in the ground. I have got seed in the ground and God is going to pull off and, and bring back and God's going to restore, restore and God's going to make it right. God's going to handle it. You got seed in the ground. So stop tripping. Stop tripping. Go back to the seed mentality. Go back to the seed mentality. You've got seed in the, if you don't have seed in the ground, you better get seed in the ground. But if you, you got seed in the ground, this is for somebody very specific today who's watching, listening. You've got seed in the ground. Your situation hasn't turned around yet, but your seed is speaking on your behalf. It's going to command the dams to break and release deliverance to your life. I am telling you by the spirit of God. I am telling you by the spirit of God. I'm just, I'm just flat out telling you. I'm just, I'm telling you what I'm saying. I'm telling you what I'm saying. I'm just, I mean, you got to judge it. You don't have, listen, if you don't believe it, that's on you. But I'm telling you right now, it, you got seed in the ground, it's coming. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. You got seed in the ground, it's coming. Glory to God. Some of you got years of backlog seed that's not showing up yet. You got, you got years of stuff that, that hasn't manifested yet. But your head's getting right right now. Your heart's getting right right now. And the timing of God's going to be right. And it's coming your way. Glory to God, man. I feel God's help for somebody right now. In due season, I am telling you, your due season is coming upon you. 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 May I tell you one more story that I must go. This man has testified at the cathedral at least one time, if not twice. And many years ago, um, you get one of those phone calls you don't want to get from a parent whose son had a cinder block crush his skull. And when I saw him, the top of his skull was, was, was shifted. I am telling you. One of his friends was already killed and they thought they had killed him. He was 16, I believe. Folks, stay with me now. Uh, this is this is powerful, man. It just blows my mind to see what 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 happened, right? And so I didn't know what else to do, except uh, call a prayer chain of some sort. Every half an hour, every fifteen minutes, somebody would be praying around the clock. Got to the hospital about two o'clock in the morning, if I'm not mistaken. Family's there, and um. I don't think I'd met the young man either, you know, family. And and the doctor comes in, the resident comes in, and he was 
kind of stumbling over his words and he didn't want to tell them that he got about 15 minutes to live. He didn't want to tell them that. We found that out later. And he was just he was just talking a lot and wasn't saying much. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I simply I stopped him and I felt a little gruff, I think. I said, just tell us what has to happen for him to live. We need to know what's got to adjust or change. But there was a backstory that I didn't know about, right? And so he said, well, we got to get the swelling down, etc. He said he'd never walk, never talk. He'd never come out of this coma. You know that boy graduated and got married. Graduated from Mount Pleasant and got married. When he started walking in Newport Hospital, in the rehab area over there, Newport, Rhode Island, it shocked the nurses. When he came out of that coma, blew everybody's mind. Are you hearing me? But check it out. This is the part that blows my mind. Coletta's with their family name, Coletta's. Do you know, the mother and father were double tithing. And you know, a tithe is 10%, but as far as they're concerned, they're given 20% of their money. Man working with his hands. He just believed God. They believed God. I'm telling you, you've got seed in the ground. It's going to make stuff live that otherwise would not. I'm just telling you. I'm amazed. I'm, I'm moved every time I even think about it. Such sweet people. My God, these folks are so sweet, sweet people. And, it's, it's, and, and I was on Facebook and I saw his picture come up with his wife. I'm telling you, you've got seed in the ground. Well, folks, that, that's, it, that's 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 it. I can't, I can't go, I can't go anymore. Uh, share the video, encourage some folks with it, folks. Uh, we got much deeper into stuff that I didn't, didn't plan to get into. Um, but um, you got seed in the ground. It's going to come, it's going to come right for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The anointing makes a difference. Folks, if you can, I look forward to hearing and seeing you in the morning decree should Jesus tarry tonight. And um, and uh, we're going to rest, rest well. Amen. All right. Love you all. Have a great day. And remember what? Jesus is alive. Bye now. Please share this video with folks, folks and encourage them. Would you do that? All right. Didn't mean to interrupt your Sunday evening, but I'm so glad you came on. Bye now.